Hi everyone, um, this is a video to go over again um, carbon-13 shift calculation for your isoxazole. Again, the reason why we um, use uh, this method is that we're trying to distinguish which isomer of the isoxazole you had. Here you recall, you can have isoxazole like this where the X is on the left of the oxygen and the Y is near the nitrogen, or it can be where the Y side of your isoxazole is on the oxygen side and your X is near the nitrogen. So in order to distinguish which isomer you have, we use carbon-13 shift calculations. So again, if you look at this NMR, this NMR represents um, the carbon-13 NMR of the parent compound. So this here is your parent compound and here it's listed in this table from carbon-6 to carbon-13 the actual shifts there. Um, I put it in this table because sometimes it's difficult to read these small numbers on the carbon-13 NMR. I also have the um, shifts for three C3 and C5 which is listed here at 162.2 and 169.4. Okay so Okay, so if you want to calculate um, the carbon-13 shifts for this particular compound, the first thing that you need to consider is what is uh, C3 and what is the shift at C5. Again, if we were to number this, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and goes around 6, 7, 8, 9. This is symmetrical, so 8, 7. Just the same way they're numbered in the parent compound. 10, 11, 12, 13, 12, 11. So the good thing about C3 and C5 is that it remains pretty much unchanged regardless of the substituents that you have on your compound. So in this case, your C3 is still going to be equal to 162.2 and your C5 is going to be around 169.4. So, so for C3 and C5, there's no calculations involved. The second thing, and the first thing you want to calculate is your C4. So C4, again, is based on that equation, which is 98.1 plus the sigma constant of the C5. And that can be para or meta, depending on the compound. So in this case, if we're looking at our C4, it is equal to 98 point one plus the sigma of in this case is a paramethoxy right you have a, a paramethoxy compound so what you want to do is go down here to look at the methoxy which is here and you want to look at the sigma of the para which is minus 0 0.27 okay we don't really consider this um, particular plus just the sigma meta and the sigma para is enough so that should be minus 0.27 and sorry it should be uh, four times there so that's actually four times the 0 minus 0 0.27 and that's equal to if you do the calculation for times 0 0.27 and that will be negative plus 98.1 that new shift calculation should be 97.02 so again that one should be 4 times 4 times C5 okay okay so that's your C4 calculation Thing that we will need to do is calculate all the other shifts. So again, let's renumber our isoxazole. Okay. So we number it like this. We already have our C3 and C5. We already know. Okay. We just calculated C4. Now we have to look at the other shifts, other carbon shifts, which is 6 through 13. So if I wanted to calculate C6, what you need to do is look at what is the shift at the parents. Remember, these carbon shifts are for the parent compound, the parent isoxazole, no substituents. 
So again, this here will be 126.6. And the shift, you look at this, this is para, carbon 6 here is para to the methoxy group. So what you want to do is look at methoxy and look at the para to methoxy, which will be here. So that's minus 7.7. .7. Okay, so it'll be 126.6 minus 7.7, .7, and that'll be equal to 118.9. If you want to calculate now, if let's say you want to do C8, C8, if you look here again, C8 is 128.7. And then you want to see C8 is actually ortho to the methoxy group. So again, you look at for the ortho is minus 14.4. And that's equal to now 128.7 minus 14.4. So that's equal to 114.3. And you can continue on like that all the way around. Uh, regardless of what you have in this case because these are um, a paramethoxy group and a parabromine there whatever shift you calculate for 8 here will be the same as 8, 7 and 7 and so forth but if you have a, a, met, a meta group that may not be the case so you still need to look at each um, particular parent compound and calculate based on the relationship of the ipso to that particular carbon Okay, so again, if we were looking at, let's say we were looking at C12, okay, C12, again, check your, is 128.6, and C12 is what relationship? It's ortho to your bromine, right? C12 is ortho to this bromine, so what you want to do is go for, bro look at bromine and look at the ortho position, is 3.4. So you want to add 3.4 to that, and then that will be 128.6 plus 3.4, which will be equal to, oops, hold on, 128.6, trying to do my calculation here, plus 3.4, that's 132. Okay, so I hope you get the idea now. So now we know how to calculate, how to know what the C3 and C5 is. It's the same as the parent compound. C4 is calculated using the Hammett constant equation. And then the rest of them are, is calculated using the carbon-13 shift table. Okay, if any more questions, please let me know. We did already do an example of the meta substituent in class. Uh, so we've already gone through an example like that and I will post an example like that not in a video but just um, on paper uh, as a handout okay bye